Hey guys, hello, my name is Marcus and welcome to TalkSober.com. Today what we're doing is we're starting our first of our live AA type alcohol recovery meetings online. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through all the different things that you need to do to stay sober and all the things that have helped me stay sober for almost three years now. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the serenity prayer and we're going to talk about stoicism and how that's going to help you stay sober. So hopefully my audio is working good and hopefully everything is working well. Now you'll notice on the side of this video there is a chat box and that chat box you can use to type in whatever you want um, and interact. So if you have a question or something like that you can interact with our channel live. So it's really cool. You can type something in if you want to type something in and say hello. Uh, you can do that. Now remember that the live chat is public. So if you don't want anything personal revealed or you don't want to say something that you don't want others to hear, don't use the chat box for that. Uh, you can actually email us throughout the week and use the forms on our site at TalkSober.com throughout the week. Um, and you can talk to us there if you want to have something um, talked about on the live things. And you'll see here I left the little ballerina SpongeBob that my daughter uh, created up there as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what it means to be sober and we're going to talk about the serenity prayer. So let's go ahead and put that up on the screen here for you so you could take a look at that and hopefully I'll be able to uh, use this properly. All right, the serenity prayer is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what that means and where that comes from. So I'll leave that up there for a second for you, and we'll go back to the screen. So let's talk about falling into the whiteboard, or the blackboard as it were. It's white on the other side, right? Um, let's talk about what that means, right? The Stoics were people in the ancient times, a long time ago, uh, that were philosophers, right? Ancient Greece and Rome and stuff like that. You have Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, and things like that, uh, guys like that, that talked about um, different ways of living. Now, a lot of people have this idea that Stoics are Stoic and they have no feelings and nothing's good and things like that. But in actu actuality, they actually did feel things and they had a very good life. And this is where a lot of people believe that the Serenity Prayer came from. Now, let's break it down and let's talk about one of the major things that the Stoics believed in, right? They talked about things that we can control and things we can't control, okay? So what they were talking about is how to live life in a sober, serene manner uh, where we're not getting all excited about certain things and we're not flipping out over things. And for those of you who have drinking issues like myself um, or have had, right, you're going to notice that oftentimes we use different types of thinking. Okay, We might think um, all or nothing. Right? We might think, okay, well, I either have a job or I'm broken on the street, or I'm either happy and I love this person, or we need to get a divorce, or I'm either this or that, or this guy got elected, therefore I feel this, or this person didn't get elected, therefore I feel this. Right? And we have an all or nothing type of outlook, which makes us kind of go crazy inside and makes us anxious and everything like that. And if you feel that way, if you feel like your life is anxious, if you feel like things are just getting too big and getting too hard to deal with, type your comments in the box and let me know that you're with me. But what we see here is the Stoics had a certain outlook. And again, that's where the serenity prayer came from, right? If you take a look at it here, you could see some of the things that he has, right? He's got, God grant me the serenity. So right now he's not feeling serene. He's not feeling relaxed. He's not feeling calm. Okay, so he says, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, right? This is what the Stoics had here, right? What are the things we can't, con cha we can't change or we can't control, okay? And then he says, the courage to change the things I can, right? Give me the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference, right? And oftentimes in life, we have a hard time realizing the difference between what we can control and what we cannot control. And we have to look at our life and say, well, what about this alcoholism thing, right? Because a lot of people talk about this word in alcoholism. The word is surrender, right? Surrender, surrender, surrender. They say surrender to the fact 
that uh, you are powerless against alcohol. Surrender to your higher power. Surrender, give up, stuff like that. Now, a lot of people look at this not the way the Stoics looked at it, which would have meant, well, this is something that I really can't control. It's an outcome that happens when I drink. Therefore, I know that. And the things I can control would be where I go, what I choose to drink for the first drink, because the chance is and the, the reality is, is that you always have a chance. You always have the mindset to refuse the first drink, right? And, and the powerless part comes in when you say, well, I'm powerless. What happens next, right? Because what happens next is the alcohol is going to change your thought process, right? It's like a thought loop. All right. So what we're talking about is the things you can control. Now, does that mean that you need to go through life saying, oh, wow, gee, I can't drink. Life is terrible. Oh, woe is me. I'm missing out. No, right? We're not a glum lot that says that. What the surrender simply means is to surrender and say, you know what? This thing is something I can't control. I can't control the fact that alcohol does this to my body and to my mind and to my thought process. It's just something natural. But I can control, I can control whether or not I take the first drink. Now, what are things in life we can't control? Okay, there's a lot of things that we can't control that make us feel uneasy, right? They make us feel not good. They make us feel like things are coming to an end, right? It's that impending sense of doom uh, that so many alcoholics feel, right? What can't we control? Well, a lot of people argue about politics. Well, there's a lot in politics we can't control, right? We can't do that. And um, a lot of times, even when I talk to people uh, in you know, recovery and stuff like that, they argue about politics. And it's like, okay, well, are you gonna do anything about it? If you're not gonna do anything about it, you gotta put something in the can't control because I'm not going to convince you right now. You're not going to convince me right now. Chances are people don't wanna hear you anyway. And so it's just something to get us all frustrated and something to get us off of our comfort, right? Um, another thing you can't control, you can't control weather, right? You can't control um, some physical stuff, right? I mean, you can eat healthy and you can do all kinds of things, but in the end, some of the things that happen, you know, we can't really control. Okay, what are some of the things we can control? And I think is the screen over here. I think I forgot to put the screen on, right? Did that work for you? Okay, I'm back, right? Now you can see what I was writing. But we have the surrender and we have the control. What are some of the things we can control? I can control my outlook, right? Because I look at it this way. I look at surrendering as kind of a freedom thing, right? It's like now I'm free. Now that I know that, I'm no longer in bondage to it. Okay, a lot of people say, well, you know, if you give up control to alcoholism, if you give up control to alcohol, what does that mean, right? Does that mean that now we go straight to the bar and we say, oh, screw it, I'm a drunk, I might as well live the part, or does that mean that we are now at liberty not to drink? Now, at the first part, when you're first getting sober, you might say, well, it's very difficult, you know? I got these cravings, right? Cravings are something you can't control, okay? your body has been going through this alcohol thing. It knows it as a path to feeling better. It knows it as a path to shutting your mind up. All the reasons you drank are the reasons you have cravings, right? There's also physical stuff. There's all kinds of things here. Now, I can't control that, right? Those thoughts are gonna come up, just like there's thoughts in my mind that come up all the time, and I can't really control them. I can't do a whole lot about them. But what I can control is how I react, right? How I react. So I get a craving. I say, well, you know what? I want to go drink. That's a craving, okay? And it, it passes my mind. It's like a river of thought, and that passes through my mind. And I say, wow, interesting. That's there. Now, at that point, I can choose to say, well, I can't control it. Screw it. Let's go act on it. Or I could say, well, that's a natural thought. That's something that's going to happen. It's something natural for someone who struggled with alcohol to do, right? That's, that's natural. They have the craving. Now, you don't have to pick up the craving and go run with it. That's where your control, one of the things you can change, is how you react. Because up until now, you've probably been reacting where you say, well, there's the craving. I'm going to go act on it. There's the craving. I'm going to go act on it. There's the craving. I got to drink. I hate those cravings. I need to get rid of them by drinking. 
And instead, what you can do is you can change the way you react and say, well, I know that the cravings are going to be there. Most of the time, they'll probably go away just at that. If they don't go away, obviously, alcoholism and OCD go hand in hand. Obsessive compulsive disorder is obsessing about something. Oftentimes, when we get these cravings, it's easy to obsess about them. Right? And it's interesting because oftentimes when I used to obsess about these cravings, I would go and I'd say, you know what, screw it. I need to get rid of this feeling. I need to get rid of the craving. I'd go to the bar. The lady would start bringing over my favorite drink. She'd put it in front of me. And instantly I'd stop shaking. I'd start feeling better. Now at this point, I hadn't even had a drink yet. My body was already reacting to the fact that it was there, the fact that I was going to get it. So a lot of the reactions, a lot of what you're craving is actually solved without actually having the substance, which is very interesting. It's kind of like a security blanket for adults, so to speak, right? But we have the craving and we have the choice of how we react. How am I going to react? And that's why when you look at that prayer again, it says, Grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. What can I not change in my life, right? You get each thing that comes at you and you say, well, you know, this is coming at me. What, what does this mean? Okay, maybe I lost my job or maybe someone broke up with me or maybe there was a flood or whatever, right? Whatever catastrophe or whatever non-catastrophe that we turn into a catastrophe we have in front of us. We say, how am I going to react to this? Can I control it? Well, I can't control the flood. I mean, it's just going to happen. I can't control the job loss, right? That's just going to happen. Okay. It might be from past things. It might be whatever, but we look at that and we say, well, what can we do, right? What can I do? Well, I can actively, um, go look for a job. I can actively, um, call my homeowner's insurance or whatever. But the problem is as our minds go to catastrophe and we all of a sudden want to shut off, right? How many of you guys out there listening to this, just want to shut off. You're like, sometimes I want to go home and I want to shut off because I don't want to think about these things anymore. Right. And we have those, but the cool part about this is the fact that life can always get better. Things can go south in an instant and things can go north in an instant. There's a bunch of ebbs and flows of life that we can get through. There's a lot of things that we can do to help ourselves be able to cope by understanding what can I control or change? What can I not control or not change? Okay. One of the things that's very, very important that I see a lot of people struggle with is they struggle with not being able to change other people. Okay. This is a big one because people, they come to you that sometimes people just irritate you, right? They just irritate you. They make you mad they tick you off. I got like, my whole family is full of people like this, right? They're great people, but they just have a way of picking at that scab that you don't want picked and starting a fight you don't want to start. But this is one thing I can't control, right? I can go to my family events and I can say, well, you know what? I know I can't control this other person. Now I know they're going to say it. I know they're going to do whatever. So what can I control? Well, I can control not going. Okay. Well, Marcus, what about the family? What if I miss Thanksgiving or if I miss this or if I miss that, right? By not going, what are people going to think about me? Well, that's something you can't control either. Other people think, right? And the funny part about this is we get all hyped up about what other people think when in actuality, one, we have no idea what they think. And two, we're not even around to hear about it, right? It's like, who cares what they think? My job is to stay sober. My job is to live as peacefully as I can, right? So I can control not going to that event. I can control what I say. I can control what I do, right? So this time I go to my family and I say, you know what? Someone goes, hey, man, you got to vote for this guy. And I say, well, no, I don't need to do anything. And quite frankly, I don't talk about that at family events anymore, right? I just controlled the outcome. I can't control what he does, can't control what he thinks, can't control what he thinks about me don't really care, right? Because oftentimes we are giving our mental energy and our feelings to something that doesn't even matter in the long run. It just seems to, right? It's kind of like when you're driving in your car and you drive in your car and people have these ways of getting really, really crazy when they drive in their car. 
right? You bump into them or whatever. You get a little scratch on their car. They come out and they start yelling things and they say you need to go to hell and they say you're terrible and whatever, right? And all that happened was one tiny thing. So here's the here's the little thing that happened. And what they're doing is they're making this huge mountain out of it, right? They're making this huge mountain out of something that was really nothing. And so we got to look at this and we have to ask ourselves, ask ourselves, what is it that we're doing? Are we making a mountain out of nothing? Are we really giving weight to this stuff? And what comes to play here? And you'll see this in the serenity prayer. You'll see it in sobriety literature. You'll see it in everything. What's really coming to play here with the idea of surrender is ego, right? Your ego, your sense of self. This is something I, on a personal note, struggled with very badly when I was getting sober was my sense of self. Who am I? Right? I would think things like I am a fake, fraud, bad person. Right? I would think all these things about myself. And then I would think, okay, well, what's going to happen if I admit I'm an alcoholic? Well, then there's going to add this other thing. And I'm going to think I'm weak. I'm a loser. I can't hack it, right? And all these other things, all because I can't have a drink or I don't really want one anymore, right? A lot of alcoholics look at it as I can't have a drink, therefore I'm not like them. I'm going to miss out on life by not drinking. But in actuality, you're not missing out on a whole lot because you know what road this takes you down. You know that alcohol is not good for us anyway. It's actually poison, which is why you get the reaction in your body that you get because of the fact that your body is trying to get rid of it, right? That's the whole thing. Your body is trying to get rid of this stuff. So when we look at this, we say, well, what am I allowing my ego? Like this guy here, right? He got bumped in his car. He got a little scratch. It probably cost a whole 46 cents to take a Sharpie pen and go boop and fix it, right? Depending on the color of his car. So we look at that and he's making this huge thing out of this. And, and people look at this alcoholism and they say, well, there's this huge thing. And it's because your ego gets in the way. It's the sense of I want, I need, I should have, this is fair, this isn't fair, this is how it should be, right? What we need to do to stay sober is let go of our bullshit notions of how we think things should be, right? We have this idea that things should be a certain way. Instead of accepting, as the Stoics would say, and as the Serenity Prayer kind of points out, right, things are the way they are. Can we accept things the way they are right now? These things I can't control. Can I accept them? Because once I accept them, I have the freedom to move forward, right? Once I accept, like right now, if you're still struggling with alcohol, you need to use one of the links at the top of the screen. I made this little link thing up there that rotates. It should be rotating between the disclaimer the need help one and the other one. Are you guys seeing that? If you see that on your screen, type something in the chat box, let me know. Uh, there's a little YouTube chat box that you can use um, to interact. If you have a question or anything, I absolutely encourage your questions and your chats and your comments and everything like that. So really cool. But what we look at is the things that we can't control, the things we can't change. And we look at surrendering, which is putting down our ego and saying, you know what? My bullshit notions of the way life should be are not reality. My bullshit notions of what I should get and what other people shouldn't get or what I need and what people other, need, other people need and different things like that. We have our expectations and your expectations are setting yourselves up for disappointment and failure. Sometimes you will get the things that you think you should have. Sometimes you won't get them, right? We look at this and we say, how can I live a life free of the expectations and free because once I surrender to the fact and say, you know what? Okay, I don't understand this alcohol thing all the way. I don't know what it means. I don't know much of anything about that. But what I do know is that when I take a drink, this is the outcome. Isn't it funny how our expectations in life, we expect to come true. But when we look at alcohol, we expect that it's going to do something different than what it does, right? We know that when we have alcohol, it does something to our body and we gotta have more and things go downhill and we feel like crap, right? You might be able to do okay today, but we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You might be able to do okay for a couple of weeks. We don't know what's gonna happen next month. That's why I don't drink today because I don't know what's gonna happen, but I do know this. 
I do know that if I drink, it's going to take my thought loops down a path I don't want them in, right? Right now, my thoughts are going up here, right? And right now, I have the ability to control some of my thoughts, right? And by control, I don't mean control exactly what I'm thinking. I mean control what I choose to pick up on, right? I might be here. I'm three years sober. Sometimes I have a craving, right? I have this craving like this. And it says, man, be nice right now. It's really hot in Florida today. Remember that nice drink you used to like? Wouldn't that be good, right? And that thought passes by in my river of thoughts. Now, if I'm in a place of being able to control them, I could say, you know what? Thanks for sharing. I understand that you do crave it. That's fine. But I'm not going to listen to you, right? That's what we can do. Now, if you step over here and you say, well, you know what? I'm going to have a drink. I'm going to take that craving and I'm going to pick it up. Right now what happens is your thought process is down here. And when your thought process is down, you're going to be in a rut. How many of you guys feel like you're in an alcohol rut right now and you're like, I can't control this, I can't change this, why can't I get out of it? It's because you need to be over here and you need to focus on the things you can control. I can control one, not to think about that. If it keeps coming up, I just say, thank you for sharing next. Thank you for sharing next, right? That's something we can expect. It's going to happen. It's natural. It's very, very natural, right? Just like I, I expect it to get warm during the summertime. I expect it to get cold in the wintertime. These are things we can expect and usually happen. I can also expect that if I drink a lot, my body's going to crave it. I can also expect that if I uh, think certain thoughts, it's going to happen, right? It's like uh, Alan Watts used to say, or he said, um, he said that uh, you could worry about anything if you're the worrying type. Now, I find this phrase very interesting because I can worry about anything if I'm the worrying type. Do you ever meet someone in life that just constantly stresses about money or constantly stresses about the economy or politics or something like that, right? They're the type of person, no matter what goes on, they are that type of person that worries about that stuff, right? And I used to be the type of person that would go down those paths and I would worry and worry and worry till the cows came home, right? And I would continuously worry about this stuff and I was caught in a loop and the drinking didn't help because it brought me down a level and it was a lot easier to get into trouble in my mind when I was down. It would lead to depression. It would lead to hopelessness. It would lead to... Um, the sense of feeling that it should all be over, right? And you can hear about my story on the channel, uh, the YouTube channel. And if you guys like these, put something in the box. Say, hey, Marcus, you know what? I like your, your live things. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start doing these every week. Uh, probably start with one or two a week. If you guys really like them, uh, we'll have them every day. I know a lot of people like them every day on weekdays because I work out of the office on weekdays, and that's where I have all this stuff set up. Um, but we can do that for you. If you like them, type and let me know if you like them. But what happens is you have these people that are the worrying type and they struggle with this stuff, right? It could be adapted to anything. You're going to think about drinking all the time if you're the drinking type, right? You're going to think about depression all the time if you're a depressive type. And these types of things bring into mind the difference between content of mind and uh, what was the other one? Working of mind. Okay? There's a difference between the content of your mind and the working of your mind. The content of your mind is like the cravings. The working of your mind is the obsession, right? The obsession, the loops, the types of things you get into, right? If you're a type of person that's prone to depression and you're prone to thinking down, this is something that's probably been with you your whole life. This is the working of your mind. Now, again, the surrender part comes into play here because if you know that your mind works that way, all you have to do is say, well, it's something that happens, right? I get those depressive thoughts. That's what happens. Instead of saying, oh, man, I got those depressive thoughts. I must be real depressed. Things must be really bad. And then your mind's going to start to look for things that are really bad. And it's going to start to look for things that are terrible. And pretty soon you're going to be feeling really, really bad. But if you notice and you say, you know what? That's just the way my mind works. That's it. I obsess over things, right? And then the content of the mind, when it comes up, you might think about money. You might think about other people. You might think about uh, depression. You might think about happiness, 
right? Whatever it is, you might think about these things, but because this is all just content of mine, you can ignore it, right? But once you, you bring it into the working of the mind and you stress on it, it's gonna go into these big loops, right? And that's why we really wanna look at the things we can control, right? And the things that we can change. I can change what content I pick up on, okay? The working of the mind, it'll change over time, but it's a little difficult to do, right? It takes a lot, but I can start here. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to start here. I want you to start by saying, I can control not drinking today. And if you're detoxing, if you're dealing with that stuff, go get help for detox. It's nothing to mess around with. Um, you can go to talksober.com slash detox. That's talksober.com slash detox. You can get some information on how to detox and uh, where to go and what to watch out for and different things like that. Very important. Um, but I can control that part. I can control not having the first one. After the first one, I might be in trouble. I might not be able to control after that, right? I can't control other people, but I can control my response. I could control my not caring, right? Why do I care about this person so much anyway? Why do I care about that stuff so much anyway? Is there a way I can step back? And when we look at the art of the stoic way of life um, and the serenity prayer and things like that, that model stoicism, we look at what we can control, what we can't control, and we look at how we can surrender to those things and how surrendering to the fact that we have trouble with alcohol or we're alcoholics or whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter what you call it, just surrender to the fact that, you know what, I got a problem and I need out. And when you surrender to that, it gives you the freedom. And no longer do you have to say, well, I can't drink. It's kind of, I don't want to drink because I know that drinking makes the content of mine go to the working of the mind, which brings me to this point, like that guy in the car where everything's a mountain out of a molehill and I go into this dark place of my thought life, right? So look at what we can control and start to look at these things and say, well, when these thoughts come up, I know that they're just content of mind. I know that is, right? And if a depressive thought comes up and naturally you're gonna wanna go down, you'll see it, you'll, you'll feel it, or you wanna go down that path. You'll say, oh, whoa, man, you know, you lost your job. Well, next is this, next is that, next is this, whatever. It's like this old saying, pour me, pour me, pour me another one. Right, because you look at this and you say, the working of mind is at work. Now, if I manipulate the content and the working by drinking, then I'm screwed. And if I let my ego get in the way, right? The ego is, is where your expectations are. It's where your um, sense of I deserve, I need, I want, instead of accepting things the way they are. Once you decide to accept the things the way they are right here, right now, then change happens. There's a really good quote. Um, I forgot who it was by, but it's a really good quote that I read the other day. Um, I had it somewhere. I'll, I'll use it in our next webinar, but it was talking about how, um, how fear is the beginning of change, or it's the beginning of like fear or something like that, or change, something like that. It was talking about how fear, um, fear of something new ends up causing change, right? And and for me, that happened very, very big because I feared everything before I got into recovery. I feared money, I feared life, I feared death, I feared everything, right? I feared going outside. And for me, that was the pivotal point that caused me to start to change because I started to look at this and say, well, this is all ego. This is all me saying what I want, what I need, what I think I should have, what I'm afraid of. But then I was able to relax and say, there's a lot that I'm not in control of, right? You think you're in control. If you have a control thing, and someone told me years ago, uh, before I got sober, this person uh, was talking to me. She was in recovery. And at that point, I always thought I was like little passive dude, right? And um, passive aggressive. But I thought, thought I was passive and nice and whatever. And she's like, you know what, Marcus, you're a control freak. And I was like, me? Me, a control freak? Are you crazy? Have you met me? I mean, everyone around me is a control freak, not me. And so I started to look at that and I started to say, wow, you know, there are a lot of ways that I am a control freak because of the fact that I want to control everything. That's what anxiety is about. Anxiety is about us not being able to control our environment, right? If I was able to control everything and say, sit here, sit there, sit there, I'm the king, I sit here, I wouldn't be very anxious. 
right? So we look at this and we say a lot of this is, is control freak, a lot of it is ego, a lot of it is looking at it and saying, well, from where I'm at right here, I can't control anything, right? I can't make the earth stop. I can't make the earth go. I can't make it hotter out. I can't do much of anything. But what I can do is I can learn to be comfortable where I'm at, right? Because so much of life and so much of the reason we drink is because we're looking forward to something or we're looking back at something, right? I look back at the past and I say, man, I blew it, or man, they hurt me, or man, this happened, or I was abused, or I was hurt, or I have this, or I have that, right? Or I'm depressive, or I'm ADD, or I'm OCD, or whatever letter alphabet soup you want to put on it, or I'm not going to be able to get that, or tomorrow's going to be bad, or tomorrow's going to be this. But if we sit right here and right now, like the Stoics taught us, and we say today, right, right here where I'm at, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change right now, right? Because I can't change a whole lot yesterday or tomorrow from here. But I can look at right now and say, what can I change right now? How can I live differently right now? I can choose to not drink right now. That's always in the future, right? That's always in the future. And you can change that. No one's going to force it down your throat. And if they do, you know, I, I don't know what to do then. Maybe we'll have a webinar about that or a uh, live training thing about that. But um, no one's going to make that stuff happen except for you. And right now, you can control your outcome. You can control what you do right now. And if in 15 minutes you say, I got those cravings, I want to go drink again. Say, well, just like I did 15 minutes ago, I can control it again. And you keep doing that. You keep doing that. You keep doing that. And here I am three years sober, and I've done that 100,000 times, right? Almost. If you count the 15 minutes for three years, I think it's like 100,000 times. Kind of cool. But we look at that, and it's like those are 100,000 different times when you look at this and you say, well, what can I do? What can I change? What can I control? What can't I change? And then you relax and you say, well, I can be here now where I'm at, and I could be okay. Right? I could be okay, and you can be okay too. I hope you enjoyed our first live thing. I hope you enjoyed Ballerina SpongeBob, compliments of my children, uh, which you could tell my children are about the same height as me because they could reach up there and it's hard for me to reach up there. I hope you liked it. Put your comments and your questions in the box. Join the YouTube channel uh, here at Talk Sober. Go to TalkSober.com. Uh, check out the videos we have for you subscribe to the channel and watch out we're going to have some more of these live things these live meetings and help you stay sober so if you have any questions or if you want us to cover a topic that you'd like uh, go ahead and put that in the boxes and on the channel and everything like that thanks again i'm marcus and here's to focusing on the things that we can't the things we can't control the things we can control surrendering and saying well it's probably just my ego that wants all these things anyway can i be okay right now and yes you can be okay right now so thanks again stay sober and i'll see you in the next video or live cast thanks again